Hey everyone, it's your girl Amanda the author. Thanks for tuning in. Today we are talking about being an indie author, specifically how to be an indie author when you have a full-time job or other commitments that prevent you from being an indie author full-time. So I have seven tips for you to help you along your journey in addition to a little bit of background about me. So let's get started. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Starting this month, I will be uploading two videos a week. The first will be writing tips and tricks, and the second will be all things fantasy, fantasy reviews for books, movies, TV shows, tropes I love, and more. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button, and let's get started. For those of you who don't know me, if you're just stumbling onto my channel for the first time, I am Amanda Ross, I'm an indie author, and I'm also a marketing specialist. I've been in the marketing game for over 10 years now, and during that time, I have written two books, To A Stare With Love and To Lars and Desperation, and also I've co-published a short story anthology called Girls of Might and Magic. I also co-manage the Facebook group, Diverse Books with Magic. I have my YouTube channel here. I have a YouTube series that I'm doing with a couple other indie authors called Lit Bitches and a whole lot more. I have a lot going on. But this entire time, I've had a full-time job that is pretty demanding. And in that job, I've had to do a lot of writing. So I'm essentially writing almost all the time. So because of that, when I first started my indie career, I knew I had to put some kind of schedule in place. I knew I had to figure out how to make everything work because I wasn't about to give up on being an indie author, but your girl's gotta get paid and make some money. So I could not not have a full-time career. Additionally, once I started adding more things onto my plate, like my YouTube channel, like my Lit Bitches series, like the Facebook group, I also had to reevaluate my schedule and make some changes. So I have a couple tips for you. If you are an aspiring indie author or current indie author, no matter what stage you are in the game. But first, before I give you these tips, let's talk a little bit about what it takes to be an indie author in the first place. So you may be wondering if you're somebody who is just getting started in the indie author game, you're a writer and you're wondering whether you should be traditionally published or if you'd like to take a crack at self-publication or indie publication, uh, you might be wondering what does it take and why is there a whole video dedicated to being an indie author when you have a full-time job? Well, when you are an indie author, you're responsible for the whole shebang. You're responsible for not only writing the books, but you're responsible for the marketing and distribution. And what I mean by that is this. You will need to find somebody to edit your book. You'll need to find somebody to do the cover. You'll need to find somebody to format your book. You'll need to procure your ISBNs. You'll need to add the book to Amazon. And if you decide to go wide, meaning not just have your book sold on Amazon, you'll need to add it to Ingram Spark. You'll need to do all of the marketing, so creating some kind of launch day plan or some kind of marketing plan to generate buzz and to make people aware that you have a book, you'll need to do that. You'll need to figure out pricing for your book and so on and so forth. You'll also need to write your book's back cover blurb and more. So there's a lot going into it when it comes to being an indie author. It is very rewarding, but I would be lying to you if I said it wasn't challenging. I would be lying to you if I said I didn't have nights where I laid in bed staring at my ceiling, full of existential dread, wondering why the heck do I do this, right? But it, again, is so rewarding. I love being an indie author, and there's a lot of control and a lot of pros with being indie. That said, it requires a lot of you. That's why I'm doing this video. I have a couple tips to help you. Uh, these things have worked for me and have helped me publish my two books, plus co-publish my anthology. They help me as I'm working on this YouTube channel, as I'm ramping up, putting more videos out, as I'm doing my best with my email marketing and more. So let's get started with these seven tips to help you be an indie author when you have a full-time job. Tip number one is to do a self-analysis. And by that, I mean, take a look at everything that's going on in your life. I think in order to put a plan in place, some kind of schedule, you're going to need to take stock of what you have going on and also when you are most productive and when you are not. So in addition to looking at things like what is your work commute, if you have one, if you're working remotely, what is your work schedule and is that something you can you know, change around a bit since you're working remotely? 
when are you the most productive? Are you a morning person or a night owl? What is your kids' schedules like? Do you have children? Are they in soccer practice? Do they have their own commitments? Do you have a spouse that works a lot and therefore you're splitting chores? Things like that. By taking a look at your real life and all of the things you have going on, you can then put a schedule that will fit into your life instead of trying to you know, shoehorn your life into your writing schedule because that could lead to you not being able to stick to it because you have so many things going on and so many other commitments. Once you've done your self-analysis, you can start to create a schedule. So I have two examples for you. Now, pre-COVID, I had a hellish commute. At the time, I was living in Atlanta and I worked in Sandy Springs. Now, outside of rush hour traffic, it takes about half an hour to get to Sandy Springs from where I lived in Atlanta. But with rush hour traffic, I was looking at an hour commute in the morning, an hour and 20 minutes in the evening. So I really had to take stock of what could feasibly work for me. I'm not a morning person. I know I'm not super productive when I first wake up. I didn't want to wake up at five in the morning to write. Sorry for all the people who want to do that. That's just not me. So I decided to do something like this. I would leave my house at seven in the mornings to be at work by eight. I worked from eight to five. At five, I would head home and it would take me about an hour, hour 15, sometimes an hour and a half. And then from 6.30 to seven, I would just relax. Then most nights of the week, I would work out between seven and eight. So anywhere from half an hour to an hour workout, that way I felt like there was a very distinct break between work, commute, and my nightlife. Then around 8 p.m. is when I would start writing. And I would write anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour, depending on how I felt that day. Now that I'm not working in an office, and since I've been working remotely because of COVID, I have a completely different schedule. I still don't wake up super early in the mornings. I'm not part of 5 a.m. writers club and that's okay with me. I wake up around seven in the morning, between seven and 7.30, I have my coffee, I do a little reading, I work from nine to 5.30 and then at 5.30, I go for a walk and I come home and I start writing around 6.30 or seven. This schedule worked for me up until I started doing YouTube. And again, I had to refine my schedule. So when it comes to creating your schedule, like I mentioned with the first tip, you want to try to make your schedule fit with your life and fit with who you are as a person. If you're not a morning person, don't schedule yourself for a 5 a.m. writer's club because you won't be consistent. There's nothing wrong with not being a morning person and you should try to do your authorly things at a time when you feel most productive and when your schedule allows. If you are a morning person, more power to you, then you should totally allot time before your schedule to do your stuff then. And note, when it comes to your schedule, you might change it. You might need to be flexible. Like I said, when I, I had a completely different schedule when I worked in an office than when I do now, and I have a different schedule now even, now that I'm doing YouTube videos from when I was only writing and doing indie author stuff. Tip number three, think outside the box. Once you have a schedule and once you know what you have going on in your life, you can start to think of other things that might help you get your writing done. Now this tip is specifically for writing. I have another tip that's more specific for the other aspect of indie authoring, but I think one big thing is that when you're a writer, and I've totally been through this, you always want to write. You're always, especially if you have a story that you're super on fire about, you're always wanting, I want to write, I want to write, I want to write. And sometimes you might feel hemmed in by your schedule or whatever you have going on. So one thing that can help you get more words in if you absolutely cannot make time in your day-to-day -day schedule to do so is to Think about doing dictation. There are different dictation softwares out there. You can even just use your phone and you know turn on your camera and just start dictating your writing. That's something you can do on your commute. That's something you can do when you're taking a walk. That's something that you can do if you're doing the dishes, if you're cooking. That way you are technically writing, you're getting your words out there, and it's something that will again fit into your schedule more naturally.
Additionally, if you're somebody who does have a commute, but you're not driving, let's say you're taking the train, try using your notebook or writing in your phone in your notes app. Or if you're somebody who's on the computer all the time, which I can totally relate to, just keep a notebook with you so that you can actually, you know, step away from the computer on your lunch break or after work and just start writing in your notebook. By thinking outside of the box in these ways, it'll help you get your words out and then you'll feel at the end of the day like, I actually wrote something and not feel, you know, frustrated or feel like you're not doing what you need to do because, you know, you're not able to, to make time traditionally um, by writing on your computer. My fourth tip for you is very important. And that is once you have a schedule, you must start telling people what your schedule is and set boundaries, both for other people and for yourself. So I suppose this fourth tip is set boundaries. Your schedule for your indie author life is important. And if you don't treat it as important, other people won't treat it as important either. No matter what stage you're at in your indie authorship, it's important to start seeing and viewing it as a job because it is. If your goal is to one day start publishing books, regardless if your goal is to do that full time or just on the side, you have to start looking at your indie authorship as a business and as a job. And just like your day job, you have a certain schedule that you must adhere to. People know that when you're at work, they should not call you, they should not contact you, they should you know, not blow up your spot while you're at work, unless it's an emergency. You have to set that boundary with people during your indie authorship time as well. This is a conversation I've had to have over and over again with my mom. Um, she lives alone. I tend to talk to her a couple of days out of the week, but when she calls while I'm doing my author stuff, I don't answer. I send her a text, make sure she's okay, and then if she's good, I keep it pushing and let her know that I will talk to her later. At first, she was a little like on the fence about following the schedule. She wanted to talk to me when she wanted to talk to me. But once I had that conversation with her and told her, hey, this is my writing time, it's important, it's my job as well, and I need you to you know, respect that and not contact me between this time and this time unless it's an emergency, she got the hang of it and now she knows my schedule almost as well as I do. Almost more than I do, honestly. Hold that time sacred, hold yourself accountable and honor that time so you're being consistent and actually doing what you need to do during that time and let everybody else know that that time's important and set that boundary too. My fifth tip for you is to utilize some of the times you might have during your day job to get your writing and marketing and all your author business stuff done. When I worked at my last job, I wrote the last quarter of To A Stare With Love on my lunch break. I had an iPad with a little keyboard attachment and I would just sit in the lunchroom, eat my food and write at the same time. And like I said, I wrote the entire last quarter of the book doing that. And on the days when I didn't feel like writing, I would use that time to do marketing stuff. I would pre-plan my social, I would send some emails out, I would work on my email marketing and more. Also, keeping a notebook with you, like I mentioned in the think outside the box tip, is another good idea because if you have you know, a story idea that comes to mind, if you have a, a line of dialogue you need to write out, then you can do that in your notebook or even any kind of marketing idea. Keeping a notebook with you is essential and I hope that you do and start utilizing your lunch breaks. And if you are somebody who likes to take your lunch breaks to take a walk, you can still use that time by using the think outside the box tip and getting some kind of dictation software or even just filming yourself, you know, speaking your writing aloud. My sixth tip is extremely, extremely important. All of them are, but this is probably one of the most important tips that I have for you. And that is to streamline your processes. When you're an indie author, like I mentioned, you are more than just a writer. You are also a business person. And it's important to think about yourself in that way. It's important to take your schedule seriously in that way and think about it as your job. And it's important to find ways that you can streamline your process, especially if you're really busy. So that means 
pre-scheduling your social media, pre, pre-doing your graphics for Instagram, pre-doing your reels, pre-doing your videos for TikTok, and pre-scheduling it through an app like Hootsuite or Later. Layer is an app that does work with TikTok. I'm not sure if Hootsuite does, but I do know that you can pre-schedule your TikTok videos with Later. So if you are taking the time to do TikTok, I would use Later. You can also pre-schedule your tweets. You can pre-schedule things in Facebook. Like I mentioned, I co-mod a group, Diverse Books with Magic, on Facebook. And usually when I post, I post a couple of times a week, I pre-schedule those. Unless there's something pressing, I pre-schedule those posts ahead of time so that I'm not having to do it in the moment. Pre-scheduling your social is hugely beneficial for your time management. And it really doesn't take more than an hour or two, maybe once a week, to do that. Pre-scheduling your newsletter is also hugely important. Now, there's some back and forth from authors about whether or not you should have a newsletter. That's not up to me to decide. But it takes a lot of time to craft a newsletter, especially if you're really wanting to make an impact with your list. Pre-schedule your email in the same way that you would your social by pre-writing the content, pre-designing, pre, you know, grabbing those links and putting it all together and scheduling it send out so that you're not doing it last minute, you're not rushing, you're not stressed, and you're actually able to be more thoughtful with it. Finally, and this is another part of streamlining your process, is understanding that you don't have to be everywhere and do everything. You honestly, truly do not need to be on every social media platform. You don't need to do every single email type. You don't need to to try to do a blog and a YouTube channel and then this, that, and the other. You don't need to do that. Find what works for you, find what you enjoy doing, and focus on that. For me, I realized earlier this year I don't like blogging. And it's weird because as an author, you'd think that blogging would be my jam, but I actually prefer YouTube because I enjoy talking. I think it's the Gemini in me. And so that's why I started doing YouTube instead of blogging. Additionally, my target audience are Gen Zers, so I spend most of my time on Instagram and on TikTok. And I do use Twitter because I enjoy it, but that's more of my, my go-to fun platform. And I wouldn't be on Facebook if not for this group. So try to focus on two social media platforms at a time. Try to focus on just one email. Try to focus on, try to focus on either a YouTube channel or your blog as another way to get your name and your voice out there. That way you're not overwhelming yourself when you already have a lot on your plate. Now my final tip is also equally important and that is do not forget to take time to rest. It can be very easy to see and to think of your indie authorship as not a job and therefore you're willing and you want to dedicate all this time to it. But the problem is that you can easily burn yourself out with all of the things you have to do just as an indie author alone. Never mind having a full-time job and having other commitments like a family, kids, you know, a side hustle, a parent to take care of, what have you. So don't forget to take a rest. You can even build rest time into your schedule. You can build in days off, just like your regular job where you have a day or two off during the week where you're not actually working. It's important to do the same with your indie author schedule. And I know that firsthand. Earlier this year, I honestly had a moment of burnout. And this is even before I started my YouTube channel. I had just finished writing the first draft of Two Alars and Desperation and I had just started a new job at the time. So I was overwhelmed with that. Additionally, I was starting a new book. I was trying to adjust to having moved to a new city. I had a mom whose health was okay and I had to you know, go visit her. Never mind the fact that we're still in a panorama. So there was a lot on my plate and I'm also somebody who struggles with anxiety. So that added to my sense of burnout. I felt like I had to do everything all the time. I felt like I had to be busy all the time. I felt like I would not be successful as an indie author if I wasn't pushing myself 24 seven, seven days a week. And I wasn't getting any joy out of it. I was not feeling happy. I was feeling like a failure. I honestly felt like giving up because I just, I was so tired all the time. And after a very, very real conversation with my therapist, she basically told me that I had to take a break. And if I didn't, I would just spiral further than I already had been. 
So I took a long weekend away from social, a long weekend away from doing any, any writing, any marketing, any business stuff, and came back and instead of diving in with both feet, I essentially started putting together a schedule, a better schedule, one that actually allowed me to have a day off because that was something I wasn't giving myself was a day off to just do nothing, to lounge in bed, to go to the beach, to go on adventures, spend time with my family, spend time with my husband, do any of those fun things that I wasn't doing, actually living. I say all that to say it's important to rest. If you're somebody who has a full-time job or even a part-time job, you know that you have PTO days, you have sick days, and sometimes you need to use them. And it's the same with your indie authorship. Because you should be viewing this as a job, a very fun, rewarding, and wonderful career, but it's still a job. But just like with that job, you need sick days, you need to take a day off for vacation, you must do the same with your indie authorship. And even if you've scheduled, let's say, a day off, like my days off for Sundays, there are times when I take another day off during the week for my indie author stuff because maybe I had a tough day at work or I'm having, you know, a lot of anxiety that day. The key to all of this is putting together a schedule where you set your boundaries and making sure that it fits into your day-to-day -day life, but also being flexible and being patient with yourself and being and giving yourself some grace. So if you have a day where you're really tired, you had a bad day at work and you're just not feeling it, give yourself that time to rest and know that you'll come back stronger the next day. Trust that you will come back stronger the next day because you do have what it takes to be a successful indie author. So those are my seven tips to help you on your indie author journey. I'm just gonna give a quick recap for each of them. So first start with a quick self-analysis. See what your schedule is before any of your indie author stuff in terms of when you're most productive, in terms of your job, your other commitments, your kids, your spouse, your things like that. Then put together a schedule that actually fits into your life instead of trying to make your life fit your schedule. And understand it might take you several times and several tries to get a schedule that's right for you, but when you know, you'll know. The next tip was to think outside the box when it comes to writing, and that is using dictation software, filming yourself talking while you're writing. That way you can multitask if need be, so you can dictate your book while you're driving or while you're doing the dishes, while you're taking a walk, things like that. My next step was to set boundaries with yourself and others so that you can honor your schedule and keep it as consistent as possible. So making sure that, you know, you're doing what you need to do more days than not and letting other people know that that time that you have in your calendar is important and not to be messed with. My next tip was to use your lunch breaks and make sure that if you're able to, you take some time to even just write down a couple ideas. You can use that time to plan your social, post to social. You can use that time to write, schedule emails, and more. That is especially helpful if you're somebody who has children or a spouse or a parent to take care of. And you know, when you get home, you're home and you're in the thick of it, using your lunch breaks for this time can be really helpful. My sixth tip was to streamline your processes. So pre-scheduling social, pre-scheduling your newsletter, if you're doing YouTube, if you're doing a blog, pre-doing that content and scheduling them out in batches can help you with your time management and it'll free up your, you know, everyday day-to-day -day life so that you can use your schedule to focus on writing and not all the other little businessy stuff that comes with being an indie author. My final tip was to take time to rest and to make sure that you are being patient and giving grace to yourself when it comes to this indie authorship stuff. It's a long game. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And so you don't have to be everywhere on every social platform. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to do YouTube and a blog unless you want to. And make sure that if you need to take more rest than what you have built into your schedule, make sure you do that and know that you'll come back to your indie authorship with fresh eyes, a fresh perspective, and a real drive to get stuff done. So those are my tips, and hopefully they will help you. If you have any tips of your own for being an indie author with a full-time job or with a very busy schedule, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. I'm always looking for ways to 
level up and refine my processes. So leave me a comment if you have any advice. Thank you all for tuning in. Again, this is Amanda, the author. And like I said up top, I'm starting to do two videos a week now. So on Wednesdays, we'll be dedicated to writing. We're talking writing Wednesday. So you'll be getting tips like these on being an indie author, tips on how to make your writing better, tips on marketing stuff. So all things related to the indie author game. On Fridays, Fantasy Fridays, you'll get videos that are book, movie, podcast, uh, TV show content reviews on all things fantasy. We're also going to be talking about fantasy tropes I love, fantasy tropes I really don't like, and more. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you like that type of content, and I hope to see you next time. Stay safe, keep shining, and have a good day. Bye! Okay, so for those of you who don't me, don't me. So tip number one is to, oh, eh. Okay, hold on, let me not skip. You also need to write your book, your back normally. It would again, only be half an hour. Oh, am I filming? Okay, I, that's just, I'm not a 5 a.m. writer. I'm not part of the 5 a.m. <sighs> again, if you're not a morning, morning person if you are morning morning oh there are different software out there is see where your dick see what your see what's in your schedule if you're not that good if